Uh, yep, it, it's in the black. Ooh, look at that magic one. Welcome to Rifleman Reloaded. Today we'll be featuring the one and all American M1 Garand, or Grand, whichever one you prefer. The proper term is Garand, but quote me on that. So let me tell you about the history of this rifle. In 1932, an engineer for Springfield Armory by the name of John Garand, who's also Canadian by the way, a Canadian designing an American rifle, who would have thought, right? Designed this beautiful piece. For over 20 years, from 1936 to 1957, until it was unfortunately replaced by the M14, this rifle has seen service. All the way from World War II to the Korean War. So, you're probably asking, did Springfield Armory was the only manufacturer for this rifle? Actually, no. A lot of people don't know this, but it actually had multiple manufacturers of this firearm. It went from Springfield, Winchester, H&R, um, Breshera, Breda, Breda, not the Breda like the pistol that you see on Lethal Weapon with Mel Gibson, no. And the last one, I believe, is International Harvester. They, my brother and I went to the range at CMP. This rifle was purchased from CMP, which is the Civilian Marksmanship Program. They had multiple rifles and they have different classes of what you want to purchase and different tiers. They had everything from 1903 Springfields to mostly M1 Grands. Garands. So, what do we think of this rifle? Is it nice? Oh, it's beautiful. Nothing about the good old wood and iron steel. But at the same time though, this rifle is very unique. Believe it or not, World War II, the Germans, for example, everyone was armed with either a machine pistol like the MP40, which is rare, or the Mauser or the Car 98K variant. So this rifle is semi-automatic. The Mauser, bolt action. Now later in the years, Germany did release a semi-automatic, which is the Gewehr, but we're not talking about that today. We're talking about this unique piece of furniture, this unique piece of Americana. So just a comparison for you. The M1 Garand was chambered in 30-06. Eight rounds. This is, to, for, for, you know, for clarification purposes, this is called a clip. It goes inside of the firearm. It's not a magazine. It's a clip. It's getting a little bit of a little emotional over that. Anyways, eight rounds. This is M2 ball, if I'm not mistaken. This brand was actually, uh, I'm gonna butcher the name. I'm pretty sure I remember the name. Um, Cellier and Bellet Ammo. Now the M1 Garand uses a very unique uh, rifle cartridge these days because a lot of 30-06 rounds aren't the same. This old rifle has unique furniture, excuse me, unique mechanics that's gonna be edited that needs to take a unique ammunition. If you put 165 bullet in this rifle, 165 grain bullet in this rifle, there's a good chance that it might blow up on you. And that's no fun for you as a shooter, and that's no fun for anyone who sold it to you, and that's no fun for a piece of art, okay? 762 by 54 rim, which is what the Mosin Nagant uses, five rounds, compared to eight rounds of 30-06. Compared, just as scary. Beautiful focus on the camera, by the way. That's gonna be edited out. Back to me! <laughs> so, sorry for our delay. So the M1 Garand has a unique feature. And anyone who's ever seen this in a Call of Duty video game, Medal of Honor, Saving Private Ryan movies, Band of Brothers, the Pacific has a unique feature. That ping. That ping is to allow you, uh, to notify you that your rifle is now empty of the eight cartridges that was currently placed in this. Now, the whole story about this being a disadvantage was that the enemy, whether it be Japan or Germany, would know when you're out of ammo. And then that's when they would move in and do their assault. But as all Americans, we improvise and we adapt. There's stories of Marines using these, throwing them on the ground, allowing or notifying the enemy that they are now out of ammo. When they really weren't, you do the math. Don't want to make this too gruesome, but we won. So, anyway, we took this to the firing range, uh, my brother and I did, and he did a great, he did a great job. 
The thing about the M1 Garand is that it uses a very unique sight feature. It has an adjustable windage and elevation, rear sight, and just to so show you, the flag indicator signifying that this rifle is clearly unloaded. So, the unique noise of the M1 is that ping feature. I'm going to demonstrate what that sounds like, but it's not going to be very, very, very loud because we're sitting down and, you know, there's a table in front of us. So, empty clip, push it down, release. Nothing says America than that. The rifle is a long stroke piston system, similar to the AK-47. Also could be possibly the grandfather actually is Miguel Miklisnikov, even wrote this in his book. A lot of his ideas are from this rifle and everyone believes it's SCG-44. Unique mistake, common mistake. So on CMP rifles, depending on what you get and what you pay for, you can pay for a new stock. New stocks are branded with the CMP logo, which is going to be located here. I will provide a close up right now. Doesn't mean that the rifle is faulty, doesn't mean the rifle is bad, it just has a new stock. It's wood, wood rots. Not mine. The rifle came with two variants of the slings. The original sling that came out, as researched 30 minutes ago. It wasn't, sorry, it wasn't original. The original sling was the leather sling. Unfortunately, this rifle does not have one. That's okay because the, the thing about this sling, this cloth sling, this canvas, actually has a purpose. The reason being is because those slings that came off, those 1903s or in World War I, where did they go? Straight on the M1 Garand when they first got produced, okay? The canvas sling doesn't rot. It doesn't discolor. I'm sure it will after, you know, almost 100 years. But it's a lot more durable than leather. And there's nothing wrong with that. Actually, some people prefer the canvas sling over the leather sling. I think the leather's classy, but you're not going to find an original M1 Garand sling for cheap and still in good condition, but canvas can last a long longer. So we're not going to do a field strip of the M1 Garand today because I don't want my brother to have a heart attack in front of me. So he's right there. So that's for dad because I know he's going to watch this. So. Does it have a unique purpose? Yes, it was a, actually an extremely accurate M1 rifle. It still is. The difference is that semi-automatic, and this was stock, not for the Marine Corps, but for the Army. This was a stock weapon that you received to do your duty. Other besides, you know, of course, the M1 Thompson, the M1 Carbine, this was the rifle of choice. This was the 30-06. This thing will get their attention, okay? Especially when you ran out of ammo. But, is that a bad rifle? No. Is it a good rifle? Yes. Did it get replaced with something a little bit more better? In my opinion, yes, the M14. Full auto, external magazine. I'm talking to my brother right now as he's smiling at me with a shit eating green face. <laughs> That's probably gonna be edited out. <laughs> it might work. <laughs> so, anyways, a CMP is a unique range. I, I recommend everyone to go there if they wanna learn how to become a marksman. Um, the training video is a great educational video that you're forced to watch no matter who you are. So, as you know, the Americans didn't fight the Russians in World War II. We were allies. However, we do have a Mauser that we can compare it to. So, we're not going to go in complete detail of the Mauser. You got to check that out in another episode. However, as you can tell, Mauser bolt action rifle. This is what the standard German soldier was trained with and what he utilized. Um, it's chambered eight millimeter and it has a significant different uh, size where size matters compared to the 30 out six and the 7.62. There we go, focus, eight millimeter compared to 30 out six. America, Germany. See who stands taller? And you wonder why you're not speaking German right now. So you saw the size difference between the eight millimeter and the 30 out six. So it's kind of common sense. And we're not talking about the Pacific theater. We're talking about the European theater today. Okay. Soldiers were issued the M1 Garand. Germany was issued the Mauser. 
bolt action, semi-automatic. Holds a little bit more ammo, fed by stripper clips. Not the same feature, like I said, we'll go over that when we do the actual Mauser episode. So, oh, 30-06. So this is made for the M1 Grand, or Garand. This is gonna be a big topic. Is it Grand or is it Garand? The proper terminology is Garand. This was in an article in a gun magazine quite a few years ago. He was not very happy that everyone was calling it the M1 Grand. It's the M1 Garand. John Garand, it's his last name. Let's try to respect it. So the Garand. This is a Sailor and Bella ammo. M2 ball, 150 grain, 30 out six Springfield. The muzzle ener energy by itself, the muzzle energy is over 2,800 pounds. Do you know what this could do? It can make you have a really bad day. Now, people are wondering how fast is this round? Well, that's a good question. Honestly, the muzzle velocity for this ammo that's designated for the M1 Grand is over 2,700 feet per second. Think about that. Over 2,700 feet per second. For a standard 45 ACP target load, you're looking roughly between 840 feet to maybe 850 feet per second. So think about that, and that's a fat bullet. This is a big bullet. This will make you have a bad day. So when it comes down to it, can you imagine yourself? I couldn't, you know, going through the European theater with this rifle. Can you imagine going through the European theater through these operations that actually took place in real life from Caratan, Bastogne, also, you know, Caratan goes to Operation Market Garden. It's a very unique experience. And I'm glad I did not have to go through that myself. So, do we respect the M1 Grand? Garand? Yes, yeah, I slip up sometimes too. Yes, we do. Think about it. If the M1 Garand didn't exist, you know what we'd be using? The 1903 Springfield Bolt Action, which is not a bad rifle, but the same. It's a good rifle. It was replaced, unfortunately, in the 1950s by the M14 uh, with a cool little bit of features we will go over in another episode because we do have one on standby. Nothing says America then. Thank you guys for tuning in to Rifleman Reloaded. We'll catch you next time in the next episode. Talk to you later.